are. I'm Linda Aronson from Unleashed to Learn, and today we're very, very happy to speak with John Waite, who is the Executive Director for the Franklin County Community Development Corporation, and it is nonprofit. So I just wanted to add that in there. Um, thank you, John, for taking time out to talk sure. to us today. Thank you, and thank you for getting our name correct. Yes. Okay. But from now on, we're going to be calling. We're going to say CDC. Franklin okay. County CDC. Franklin County CDC. Okay. So anyway, I've talked to you a little bit about how I see the connection between experiential learning and entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and that we, particularly among millennials, but also even people in my age group, are really sort of jumping into entrepreneurship. So do you want to give a little background about Franklin County CDC and its mission and a little bit about its history and its rapid growth and then we'll launch into maybe talking more specifically. Good. I, yeah, I think it's important to talk about the history because we actually started 35 years ago. So there you go. For 35 years in Franklin County. And you talk about millennials now, but I think there's always been yes. entrepreneurial people. And the reason yes. why we started was that 35 years ago, we had the big factories, big companies. Mm -hmm. They were closing. They were moving down south. So we had people who had skills, technical skills. Yes. But they didn't. They, they had no place left to work. So they wanted to start their own businesses. Instead of having a 1,000 people at a machine shop, you, you start with five. Right. And you get the people with the skills. And then we got started to help them with the business skills. The, the uh, mm. it had it had a administer and how to keep your finances and how to market and then those folks had the technical skills right and th there was obviously need for it so we've been here for 35 years and we're still doing that we see people who have have a passion about some technical aspect that they've either learned or seen or you know experienced right and they don't necessarily have to run a business. You need more than just the technical mm -hmm. expertise. Mm -hmm. You need to know about marketing. You need to know finances. Mm -hmm. You keep your accounting, mm -hmm. um, how to manage employees, things like that. So we've been around that long. And then you talked about the food center. We started that 15 years ago. Wow, that and, long, um, wow. Over uh, 350 people have started food businesses. 350? Yeah. Wow. So when you talk about entrepreneurs, there's entrepreneurs all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's and uh, do you? I mean, this is something I referenced before, but do you sort of see that there's a phenomenon of you know with the food processing center, and maybe you can talk a little bit of how that operates. We're going to have a tour a little bit later, but it's almost like you know if you build it, they will come. I mean, I wonder how many products that you have out in your showcase would be there today if it wasn't for your food processing center. That is why we started this. Is we knew some businesses, we were making loans to some some food businesses, mm -hmm. but they were making each one needed a expensive kettle, an expensive chopper, an expensive mm -hmm. oven. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of saw that. And then some of them wouldn't succeed because mm -hmm. it's difficult. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they they're, they have loans or something they can't repay. So we said, what if we did this shared use kitchen? Mm -hmm. and so that's really what it is. Shared use, uh, small business incubator for food businesses. So mm -hmm. we have large kettles, large choppers, large uh, other equipment that they can come in and pay by the hour and not have this big uh, upfront capital cost. Right. And so that's why it's allowed over 350 people because they came in here, they need a couple thousand dollars maybe to buy their ingredients and do a little marketing, right. but they don't need huge upfront costs. So, you know, a couple of quick success stories is fire cider, right. um, which you've had. It's a mm -hmm. great, uh, it cures what ails you, I think is one of the <laughs> things they say. Real Pickles, one of our early users, mm -hmm. now has about 16 employees in mm -hmm. their own building. Mm -hmm. They started with one person wow. here, and every year they doubled their production and sales. And now Amazing. Artisan Beverage Cooperative, makers of Catalyst Kombucha, yes. and now they make mead and ginger libation. Mm -hmm. Again, I think they have about 18 employees now. Right. Yes, and I, so. I drink that um, frequently and enjoy it uh, very much. So and Each of them are entrepreneurs who had a passion for you know, fermenting vegetables is what Dan Rosenberg, you know, he learned mm -hmm. that along the way and he wanted to try it out. Mm -hmm. um, Will Savitri, I love the whole aspect of kombucha and that whole mm -hmm. fermentation mm -hmm. part. Um, you know, we worked Alden Booth from the People's Pint. He was, uh, we, we helped them when they started that restaurant in Greenfield, which was using local foods. He did that probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
And then he actually later on became a, on our board of directors. So wow. there's a lot of people who they're entrepreneurs and then they want to help other entrepreneurs. Ah, uh, wonderful. And then they're mentors and that's, you know, the circle keeps Is getting it, bigger. Oh, that's so incredible. Yeah. Um, I want you to speak at one point, and we've talked a lot about the food processing center, but you do a lot, you, you're a lot, you support a lot of other kinds of businesses. You mentioned the photo, what was it? Photovoltaic. Voltaic, so, right. He, okay. He's weird. Pioneer Valley Photovoltaic. Okay. Um, so this, again, when we started 35 years ago, it was a lot of machine shops, and we right. still do that. There's a lot right. of manufacturing in the Pioneer Valley, right. which it's kind of hidden now. It's out in the hill towns. There might be 10 people working in someone's, uh, you know, made up uh, improved garage or something. Sure. And a lot of them are doing specialty kinds of things, so they need a special piece of equipment that might cost sixty or $80,000. And then there's two people that need they're needed to run that machine. Right. And those are good paying jobs. Right. We also work with a lot of restaurants, which oh. a lot of the staff at restaurants aren't, it's not the highest paying jobs, but mm -hmm. they're good jobs, especially for young mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And they're just great assets for the community. Who wants to live in a community that doesn't have good restaurants? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what we really encourage our um, business owners, entrepreneurs is to have uh, know something about many areas, but then have a team around uh, you yes and some you've got to be at least aware of what you what your business needs so you get the right people on your team right and you don't have to know every single law or everything about banking you get someone you get a lawyer you get a banker who are your part-time teammates kind of thing who right. you can count on right um you know the first thing we talk to people about is a good bookkeeper and a good accountant mm -hmm. and then have someone over there who can check on some of the legal issues right and then there are some organizations out there that help with human resource issues. Mm -hmm. As you start to grow your business, you need to know about, mm -hmm. um, you know, employee benefits and things like that. Uh, some people want to have a nine to five job and not worry about it. Other people want to work on weekends and do what they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. So it's, everybody's a little different. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a really, really good point. Well, that kind of, I think, maybe um, is a good place to wind down because that's kind of... Um, what I think is really important also in learning educational settings that students be allowed to really pursue things that they're very passionate about yep. and then realize that, you know, they can move into an area that might be their livelihood. But yep. as you just said, knowing how they need to, you know, put a team together and yep. and uh, fill it out. So. Hands on and doing internships when they're younger and, uh, mm -hmm. and getting involved, you know, learning from people who have been doing it. Right. And then taking it the next step. Right. Sure. Do you have um, groups, student groups coming through here? And we are, oh, yeah. We always have tours and things and get people thinking about it. And then mm -hmm. we do try to uh, do a little networking and, you know, matchmaking when we can as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Sure. This is very inspiring. <laughs> I'm very inspired by what you do. And I just learned about the Franklin County CDC. Maybe, you know, I'm somewhat of a newbie to this area anyway, but um, I was so excited and um, just really appreciate the opportunity to talking to you today. Well, Great. tell more people about us. Oh, well. We'll be around for another 35 years. I, hope. <laughs> I think you will without question. <laughs>